Tim Wilmot here and welcome to my watercolour demonstration. This time I'm going to cover how I personally use white paint in watercolour. A bit of a touchy subject in the watercolour world. Um, some traditionalists uh, should, uh, would, should say that you, you should never use uh, white paint. They disapprove of white paint in watercolour. Um, and the traditionalist would say, well, you've got to leave out parts of your paper unpainted to preserve the highlights or white areas. And white paint could discolour with age. It could go a little bit brown and, uh, uh, and you lose that, that freshness of a watercolour. Um, but I can see it's tempting to use white paint, especially if you're a beginner watching this video. You might have been given a starter watercolour set, watercolour kit, um, and you'll see, well, that most, most of the watercolour um, sets, certainly the beginner ones I've seen, come with a tube or a pan of white paint. So naturally think, you think, well, I must use it. I must use that to make parts of my picture lighter. So in this video, I want to show you how I personally use white paint. I believe um, the argument against the traditionalists is I believe that modern good quality white paint will not fade. It won't lose its brightness with age. It's not going to go brown. Um, as long as you buy good quality paint, um, generally sort of professional or artist quality paint, not the sort of student grade or um, children's paints. Uh, leave those alone. Um, I would still leave major areas of my picture that are going to be very light or white, um, unpainted. And I'll just use white paint in moderation, just for small little areas. Um, typically, um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, typically the light on the tops of figures, and I include figures in most of my um, landscapes and street scenes, or small objects catching the light, things that are backlit. You know, if, if you're doing a, a contre jour, painting so you're painting um into the light the sunlight's coming towards you uh, the light's coming towards you then um that may throw up little bits of highlights and light areas and it's really handy just to dab in a little bit of white paint there to give that instant um a appeal um and effect of of highlighted areas and I do also sometimes mix white paint typically with a neutral tint or a Payne's grey to get a sort of chalky greyish colour. Normally, normally the consistency would be quite thick, um, so not too much water. Um, for example, uh, well, the, the subject of the painting and this video is going to be Venice. Um, doing sort of grey frames around windows and some of the architectural details or in a street scene, maybe some road markings. Um, I could uh, um, use a sort of chalky, chalky mixture. And also with mixed media becoming increasingly popular, I think it's more acceptable now to use white paint and indeed uh, body paint in watercolour, you know, really, really thick paint, maybe not watered down. And in fact, I do, in my possession, I do have a watercolour from a very famous uh, contemporary watercolour artist. I won't mention their name, but when you look closely at it, it's got loads of white paint all over it. Um, highlights on boats, uh, rigging, figures, reflections. Um, they haven't been afraid to, to use that white paint. It's very effective. Now... Just before I go on, uh, this video is free to watch, but it's not free to produce. If you like these videos, please support me via Patreon at www.patreon.com forward slash Tim Wilmot. For a very small pledge, I'll be able to continue to bring you uh, hopefully high quality full length watercolor tutorials with commentary and you can send me your paintings in for a critique as well so i give you something back in return um, for your pledge as i say more details go to my patreon site um, or if you're in patreon do a search for tim wilmot 
you'll also find the links um, in the description of this video. So the scene of this video is Venice. Uh, again, um, this is the uh, a little sort of square Campo San Barnaba, I think it's called, with a lovely bell tower there um, and the canal, a bit of a square here over to the right, light coming from right to left. And so white paint. Well, it's very tempting looking at this. You've got lots of these white areas around windows um, and these these doorways here. Um, the light here in the on the on the, on the bell tower. Um, on the, the trim on this bridge as well, going over the canal, tops of boats, rigging where it's highlighting some of the the woodwork on a boat very tempting to whip out the white paint and <laughs> just use it use it um carte blanche over over all of those areas there but i want to i want to try and show you how i might use uh white paint for certain areas but other areas not i used i just leave the white paper showing through so the scene is venice now i'm actually going to change this boat here um i'm going to because it's Venice, I'm going to put in a gondola with a gondolier. And this boat, for me, is going in the wrong direction. It's not going into the scene. But it's a nice um, it's a nice thing to have this in the foreground because with the light coming from the right, we've got, <coughs> excuse me, we've got, um, the, we could have our gondolier uh, silhouetted against a lighter background. So the foreground is going to be dark and then the gon gondola and the gondolier going into the scene towards this bridge i'm going to change some of the figures around as well um have a few figures over on the right hand side but everything else i'll, I'll pretty much keep I'll, I'll simplify some of the architectural details um particularly over the left here I'm not going to bother with all of this detail here i want the focus to be on the gondola going towards the bridge and maybe the bridge being a sort of bit of a, a focal point and then um the the, the, the bell tower with a, a lighter value um towards the background some nice shadows coming across and then introducing white paint um white paint in moderation as i say highlighting some of the figures and um maybe bits of the boat and the the bridge here railings and so on so let's see how we get on now the paper i'm using for this uh, demo is saunders waterford um, cold press paper 300 grams in weight or 140 pounds it's the medium roughness uh, medium texture paper uh, so not too smooth not too rough and with a soft pencil uh, my first stage is to draw out the outline the major shapes of my painting so i'm very brief start with the uh, roof line get that in right generally from left to right being i guess because i'm right-handed and uh, one thing i need to get quite right is this bell tower with the spire at the top um, getting that right in proportion to the overall scene and then the right hand side I want to be very understated like the left hand side the focal point is going to be the um, the bridge and the the bell tower in the background now a bit of perspective coming towards us with that um, key side and bottom of the the uh, not sure what the building is on the right hand side it's a very large building in the square <coughs> excuse me um, now this figure the gondolier trying to get that from a composition point of view right so it's not going to be in the middle just off center in the left hand third And it's just really, um, I'm just drawing this by intuition, just trying to get the figure right, get 
some kind of impression of movement, um, leaning in, pushing, pushing the oar, which they they use to propel the the gondola, and they use it as a rudder as well. Now the gondola itself, they can be a bit tricky to 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 draw paint because they've got um, because the oars on one side, the the boat's constructed as a flat bottom boat that's constructed so that <coughs> they're propelling it on one on one side, and we've got these the the bow and the stern pointing up at an angle. If you look at it from the front or the back, it's sort of pointing up at a at a funny angle. So um, quite distinctive. So getting that right takes a little bit of practice. The left hand side is going to be, as I say, very simple. No detail at all. Just want to get in the water's edge there, the, the left hand side of the canal joining the figure. And then the right hand side of the canal, as I say, with a little bit of perspective with the, the stones marking the edge of the, of the uh, key side. Back to the boat, getting these curves right, which will I'll not paint it in any great detail the bottom of the boat, but I want to get the certainly the the bow and the stern right pointing in the <laughs> correct direction. They sort of generally point in the same direction. Now another thing I've got to get right is the bridge. These very distinctive foot bridges that you see all over Venice and the sort of three straight edges over the top and then a gentle curve for the the uh, underneath of the bridge the the archway and then during the water's edge and then I got to think about the reflections um, mimicking what's above now over on the right hand side a couple of figures to balance the <coughs> the gondolier and the gondola. So there's the first one, and second one, just loosely drawn in. So I start with the heads, um, and then the shoulders. And I think, well, when I've drawn that, I think, well, is that figure? It will dictate the rest of the pose, the figure, and the direction it's going in, whether it's coming towards us. I think generally the, these figures are coming towards us. We'll, uh, we'll decide on that. And then the indication of just a few windows Again, try to think about the perspective with the top of the window and the bottom of the window. But um, I'm not going to be painting in every window there, just a suggestion of a few windows. So um, mark in a few in pencil. And that would be my guide um, for the rest. So that's the initial drawing done. Step two is the wash. Um, so I'll just replenish my palette there with a bit of aloes and crimson. Um, the palette that I'm using from the top is uh, just if I can just point out the colours to you. So I've got neutral tint at the top, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, a cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, which I'm mixing there uh, with my mop brush. Um, ultramarine blue, Alizarin crimson, a bright red, Windsor red, a light red, then cadmium orange, and then a lemon yellow. So my sky is a bit of a mixture of cerulean blue 
and cobalt blue. So almost 50-50 blend. And then with a mop brush, I'm using a Raphael mop brush here. You need to be fairly careful with the sky. It's just going to be a fairly plain sky blue. <coughs> um, going up to the edge of the buildings on the left hand side, which I want to keep fairly bright. So they're going to be quite light in value. And I've gone over the outline of the bell tower, which when I go in with that color will be, it'll give me a bit of a soft edge. And that's something that something else that, that um, we try to do in watercolor, have, a, have lots of different edges, soft edges and hard edges in the painting. So thicker paint here and my lighter red get in the tower. I'm only going to be doing this once. So thicker paint, so it's not going to bleed too much into the sky, but it's going to give me that soft edge because the sky is still, of course, quite quite moist. And then the distant rooftops So I'm just waiting for the sky just to get a little bit drier and with a smaller mop brush now I'm going to paint in the left hand buildings so I've got a bit of alloys and crimson to get a nice sort of warm pinkish color. And as I'm going over the this uh, these buildings, I'm alternating my, my color mix. So you can see there a little bit of blue. Doesn't matter if I leave out little bits and pieces um, of the paper showing. But this is the first thing, around that window, um, I've painted around the window and I'm not going to use white paint for that white surround. That's going to be left white. So these, these major areas of uh, white um, or lightness will be, I'll not use white paint for those. So now continuing on with the buildings leading into the distance and this is a soft mop brush here this actually i, I normally use some um, synthetic brushes but this one is a, a natural um squirrel i think it is natural squirrel hair Now this building on the right hand side, there will be some deep shadows going in there. So this is just the sort of base color, but I'm trying to, over this large area, I'm trying to alternate the values and not have them all the same tone. And then down to the top of the bridge, Keep mixing, alternating the colors, perhaps a little bit darker down towards the bottom. And over on the left hand side, my plan is there's going to be a shadow 
going across the canal, we're going to have the um, the gondolier and the gondola silhouetted against the brighter foreground. So it doesn't matter too much because the gondolier is going to be darker than the background. It doesn't matter if I go over, but sometimes just paint around the figure just so I can still see where that shape is um and um because i know with the dark paint we we, we can uh, we can correct any uh imperfections in the where where i've gone over that gone over those lines there so next will be just continuing on down through the painting and get the bridge done and then the right hand side uh, and the foreground and the water so I need a bit of a reddish mixture for this bridge a bit of a sort of terracotta type color now holding the brush towards the tip so I've got more of a control here because I need to be quite careful um, leaving this sort of white band at the top of the bridge and then um, around the arch there's this sort of nice curve around the arch so I need to be very careful with the brush following my following my pencil lines something like that now there's a little shop or something just beyond the bridge on the right hand side with uh, some uh, a canopy creating some shadows over the front of the shop um, so I'm just going to get in the base color of that again I'm holding the brush towards the tip just to give me a bit more control so with a bit more water on the brush now Just going to get in the right hand building. So I'm just dragging down the brush, and because I've got rough, slightly rough paper, it's just leaving a few little specks of white paper showing through, which which I'll leave, not um, not sort of overdo that area, and then the left, this left hand part of this big building will be in shade so that when, when painting there is going to be dark shadows <clears throat> and then down to down to the street level So next is going to be the street level, the key side, the square. Sort of greyish mixture. And starting over by the bridge 
working my way down. I've got a slight slope on this board, by the way, of about 10, 15 degrees or so. So it's, the paint's going to travel a little bit down the, down the paper, as you can see. So I'm always trying to use the largest brush I can. I see lots of people when they start out with watercolour, they use too small a brush for what they're doing. And, and I think if you try and get it, if you try and get away with as large a brush as you can and not try and overwork areas of the watercolour as well. So getting used to the right combination of pigment to water and making sure your, your brush is as fully loaded as you can um, and not, as I say, not overworking details. So just um, now underneath the bridge, as we're looking into the distance, I must say that the painting looks a complete mess at the moment, but we'll try and pull it back. Invariably, I don't know about other fellow watercolour artists, but um, with me, my paintings look about a third of the way through or halfway through, they look a complete mess. So if that's the case with you, just keep going. Um, never give up. Just uh, keep going to the end and uh, fingers crossed the painting will come to life and you'll retrieve the situation. Now continuing on down into the bottom left corner, just cover up all the paper that I need to. As I say, I've left, I've left behind little details around the windows the, the surrounding around the windows, the um, outline of the bridge, the top of the bridge and the archway, and just a few areas um, in that shop on the right hand side of the bridge that's in front of the bell tower. But the rest of it is all going to be painted in. And we'll go fairly cool down to the foreground of course i've got a bit of the reflection of the sky in the canal and sometimes watercolors can be too neat and tidy so you've got to within reason um, do a bit of splattering and mess things up um, in a controlled way, just to, uh, it, it helps that loose feel as well, a bit of splattering, uh, done at the right time, and then just leave it, don't, don't be tempted to go back in and correct things or adjust things, just let it do what it's going to do, and again it does help having a little bit of a slope, so the, the paint is still travelling ever so slowly down the page, and hopefully producing some some nice effects for us that you can only achieve with watercolor you can't really you can't do that to my knowledge you can't do that with oil painting or acrylics or other mediums so just trying to get a bit of a soft edge here lifting out applied some water and then with a dryish brush just gently lift out the paint without uh, damaging the water surface. Now everything's been allowed to dry so just check it everything must be completely dry at first wash before we go in with our darks So what I'm mixing here was a, was a bit of lavender.
that I've got down in the bottom there, which I, I should have mentioned at the outset. I sometimes have this um, bit of lavender that uh, I bought a long time ago, not thinking how I'd actually use it, but it comes in handy sometimes. And I could, I could have actually used um, a bit of white paint, a um, bit of uh, sometimes use white gouache. Um, I could have used white paint with the darker mixture just to get this sort of greyish, these these pillars coming down the facade of this large building on the right hand side. Um, but again, not too not too wet, and I've just dragged the brush down generally in one in one stroke and try not to go back into that line again now continuing on the dark shadow on the left hand side of this right hand building quite dark dark in value one of the darkest areas of the painting particularly um, at the top uh, against the sky quite a nice hard edge there so with the same same mop brush just mixing until it's right get a good edge on my brush as well nice sharp edge and then holding the brush at the tip again trying to get a bit more control just get in that roof roof line and the right hand edge of the shade just make sure I've got my edge still and then the a shade is being a shadow is being cast across the rooftop of the shop was there's a building in front of the bell tower so this building is casting a shadow across that over the roof and down the front of this building as well so we'll just continue on down there then all the way to street level down it doesn't matter what I leave you can see you can just about see some smaller areas that accidentally I've just left unpainted and uh, <clears throat> we'll leave those in just uh, those little sparkles now I can go over this figure uh, because I can use my white paint at the end just to provide a few little highlights on their heads just to indicate it's a figure um, and there's just a little bit of light catching them so it doesn't matter if I've gone over the outline of those figures then right in the very distance we've got just an indication the impression of some more buildings Need to think about values here, so quite light in in value. Now, there's shadow on the left-hand side of this shop that comes down to 
the bridge and that's um, hopefully quite a nice effect where you've got the the darkness against the lightness of the bridge so we've got a bit of bit of contrast going there a bit of dark against the the light so top of the shop um, just a few details of the uh, the shop the shop front there a doorway or something now over to the left hand side we need to add in some rooftops to these buildings not one straight line just a few variations in levels and differences in tone as well so just add in a bit of a, a vertical dark vertical there down the front of that building now again with this brush and fairly dry brush strokes here, I'm just giving the indication of the railings so I'm not painting in the railings individually I'm just using the side of this brush almost like a flat brush got a flat edge to it and almost in one stroke just lightly drag it across the top there it's leaving a few because I've got rough paper it's leaving just a few uh, specks of the paper below just to show just to indicate the light coming through the railings then the three archways on the bell tower just keep touching the that, that shadow on the left there it's still moist so I can go back into it of course the uh, that, that vertical shadow on the uh, front of that building I just need to think about continuing that down um, just so you can you can just peek at it um, from underneath the bridge and a, a few windows not too many not too precisely painted in And a few more windows over on the right hand side that's the waters that's the water line um, beyond the bridge now the windows so I left that bit of white paper um, showing showing through uh, after the first wash and I'm now just painting in the dark window itself try not to go over too much over the that bit of white that I left so those three so a couple of windows and an archway at the bottom and then just a few towards the middle Perhaps another one in the top left corner there but the more I go over to the left the less detail I want um, the danger is if I start concentrating too much on the left it's going to take take the focus away from the the middle of the picture So that's the reflection of that vertical line down the front of that building 
just a few little darks now on the left hand side So next is going to be the start of the foreground shadow, starting from high up on the building on the left, and then coming down to the water's edge, across the, the gondolier, the gondola, and then over to the right-hand side. And we'll use the couple of figures on the right hand side to connect the middle ground to the foreground. You'll, you'll see this in a minute. So very loosely get in these shadows on the left hand side, nothing too precise. And I'll keep I'll keep working at this shadow just to get some different effects going on in there. So quite dark there at the water's edge. And then coming across, so imagine the shadow is being dragged, is, is being cast from right to left um, across the gondolier. Now, holding the brush at the tip, let's get in the head of the gondolier. And then the body. So we used a bit of cerulean blue there just to get in a, a greyish mix. then darker with the trousers down to the connecting with the boat the gondola and now <clears throat> with this sharp edge of the brush this is quite an important part here getting this absolutely right we've got this the stern of the gondola pointing over to the right and there's a little bit of a, a curvature to the very tip of that and the front of the boat the bow maybe there's just a little bit of light coming across the middle of the boat so I'll leave that unpainted and then the oar coming down quite a long oar hitting the water Now below the boat and down into that bottom left corner, it's just, um, I just need to cover this up with something. 
and uh, just being very brief here with my brush marks. So just checking this edge again. That little precise pointy bit on the bow and the stern. And then continue on with these shadows and reflections. We've got the reflection of the bridge there. Bit of dark shade underneath the bridge on that left hand side. So now we've joined up with the right hand side of the canal. And just as I was doing down in the bottom left hand corner, just continuing on these these sort of random um, effects there. And across the bottom, so there's a slight little um, gap in the in the the quayside where there's some. I think there were, there were some steps um, on the right hand side there. Maybe for uh, it might be a, a gondolier's station. So it's uh, given us a nice sort of um, horizontal line there. Again, just checking my edge before continuing on this shadow going over to the right hand side. And that's where the steps are, just there. I'll go in with some darker, darker paint later on. So keep working that left hand side, bit more, bit more splattering. Doesn't matter if it goes beyond that area, just, it just needs messing up a bit. And then just leave it, um, as I say, just let watercolour do what it's going to do on that, uh, on that little bit of a slope. Right, smaller brush now for these figures. So the background, the background of these figures is dry, so I'm not going to get any bleeding going on, but I want to try and join with the um, that foreground shadow just melt them together so this is the right hand figure maybe it's holding some kind of a bag there and then this other figure, slightly different pose, so I haven't sort of precisely followed the pencil outline but as I'm doing the figure I keep checking it just to see what the pose looks like and trying to make it 
different from the other figures, so they're not too uh, not too similar. Now the very edge of the canal, just want to put in this red again because it's all quite moist. It's all I'm giving myself lots of soft edges. Adding a bit of blue into the uh, reflection there. Now a smaller, <clears throat> I've got a smaller mop brush now and with some thickish, darkish paint I can add in a few more darks just where I need them. So first of all there's this mooring pole um, which you see around a lot of the canals around Venice, these, these um, old tree stumps sticking out the ground. So I've just given an indication of one there, sort of coming out um, from bottom left to top right from the shadows. And I'll give this figure a bit more texture and sometimes you can pick up little little uh, areas that you've left unpainted you can make figures out of them so that's just what I've done with a four figure there there was this little bit of uh, there's this patch of um, of paper I'm painting. I just made a figure out of that um, out of that area. Perhaps there's a shadow coming across from the right hand side to connect with that right hand figure. Don't be afraid to use your finger just to help things along. Now an even smaller brush now. This, this is a small synthetic round brush with a fairly good point. I want to get in some architectural details. We're, we're using here um, more dry brush strokes so there's very little water on the brush and it's almost, uh, I'm just picking up paint out of the palette, generally based on that neutral tint there to get some nice darks. I'll pop in a dark, <coughs> I'll pop in a dark doorway um, behind that figure and then later on when I go in with the, a little bit of a highlight on the head, the head's just going to pop out at us. And likewise, a bit of a dark doorway against that, f that figure I just made up. Um, a few more darks on the shop front. Perhaps just putting a few 
little verticals for the railings and I use that dry brush stroke but just to give it a bit more form and a bit of a shadow underneath the, the, the trim around the top of that bridge. And around the archway. And with this dark now, that, so this that wash is still quite moist. I can now go in with the this uh, small brush and with dark paint, just add in some darks. It's going to blend in with the uh, the paint below, just melt in together. But just give me a, a few more darks. As we're coming towards the foreground here, I just lift out little tiny bits with the um, with a with a, a paper towel here, a tissue, not too much. Keep adding in some of these details. and a bit more definition to the back of the gondola. Just miss out the oar, above and below the oar. Add a bit of darkness to the corner of those windows. And then just a few details to the bell tower. Add something on the left hand side because the sun's coming from the right. So not, not too much. I want to keep that the value of things in the background quite light. Now those little specks that we had left in the sky, I'm making them into birds or pigeons or whatever. Um, so there's just little there's little white specks that were left. Um, from the sky wash, I just add in a few little darks there just to indicate some birds. But those those white specks that could have been done with some white paint, maybe. Um, uh, but I had them left over, so use them up. Now this gondolier does need a striped 
top to him. I think they generally have red stripes or black stripes. This one's a sort of dark red <coughs> coming all the way down. Again, this they're sort of dry brush strokes that I've done, and just to following the the curvature of the top of the body. So with this small brush, I'm just going around the painting now, just thinking about adding in little tiny details um, the top of a balcony here and then just a few railings not all of them just giving the indication of a few vertical railings there and with the doorways along the left hand side I've just added in a few darks just right next to some vertical areas of white that was left over from the initial wash there's that fourth figure <clears throat> and another little figure there going towards the bridge as I say when you've done your first wash and there's little bits of paper showing through you can very often imagine that that could be made into a figure um, it just helps the composition and adds a bit more interest in there so and now I didn't draw them in but I'm just painting in a few figures on the bridge this is a lot less figures than you'd normally find in this uh, this this is a busy square and there's I think it's uh, like a junction for a number of different uh, walking routes through through this part of Venice. It's very, very busy. I think the uh, that figure will need a jacket eventually. I'm just really playing around with the paint in this foreground, just picking up on blemishes and textures. of a few horizontal lines of the street bit of a darker side to that uh, gondolier maybe he's got a bit of rag stuck in his trousers coming up over his uh, right hand leg <coughs> it's 
So that's maybe um, the reflection of that post. Just to balance that up and then you see where, where I was doing that splattering. It's left in in my mind quite quite an attractive mark that um, is part of the charm of watercolour which I try and emphasize in a way with adding in a few of those darks it could be a a dark doorway or something like that over on the left hand side again we, we just want to let the viewer make up let anyone looking at this painting make up their mind what that could be um, use their own imagination on that left hand side Yes, this figure needs a dark jacket to bring it further forwards. It was, to me, it looked like it was receding too far away. So I've um, gone darker with the values and that should appear closer to us now. Maybe just a very faint horizontal line underneath the bridge. And I don't know what that little white speck is, but I've just added a bit of shadow underneath it. Maybe it's just a little post sticking up or some kind of mooring line. Now, um, I'm rubbing out some of the pencil marks just to get that definition back um, so quite often I might quite often I'll, I'll, I'll do this to um, rub out uh, areas of the where the white paper still showing through rub out those pencil lines particularly on tops of cars or boats or something like that make a few stronger verticals on the left hand side of those pillars don't want to overdo it too much on that right hand side <clears throat> and now what this video is all about use in moderation a little bit of white paint to pick out some highlights particularly um, I need to get just a little bit on the figures um, the side of the railing here catching the light a side of a, a lamp post where where it's against the background just picks up a little bit of highlight and then just a tiny bit on the tops there just don't overdo it so generally with a, a smaller brush as I've got or it could be with a rigger brush as well um, just pick up little highlights here and there now I need to need to add a little bit to this gondola um, if you ever see pictures of gondolas or see a gondola it's got lots of um, ornate uh, detail and trim around it so I'm trying to um, now with the white paint which I couldn't have done by leaving the picture unpainted it would have been quite tricky to do um, almost impossible um, I'm now going to pick out some of the details of the gondola um, the bow and the stern so now it just tells you more that it is a, a gondola because of that decoration on the uh, on the stern there
and then maybe just have a little bit on the top of the head not overdo it too much because this figure is in the sh in the shade and uh, that's it we're done so here's the end painting um, an exercise in just um, for me to explain just how I use in a limited way white paint to pick up on on certain highlights um, and lighter areas of the picture without having to do any finicky or detailed painting around um, areas which can be quite tricky um, particularly on a, on, a, on a smaller painting so it was a scene in Venice um, using a number of different watercolor techniques we started with the wash in the sky we went over um, with the bell tower we got that soft edge down there um, so covering everything apart from areas that I wanted to leave leave out such as the frame around these windows here um, and some arch architectural details in the background um, the top of the bridge the archway of the bridge as well they were they were left unpainted by that wash so wash was done everything was dry 100 percent dry then i went in with the darker shadows um the shadow on the right hand side here the foreground shadow as i said i wanted this gondolier to be um silhouetted against the lighter background so um sweeping shadow left to right starting from the top of the building over there and then we use a few little watercolor techniques a bit of splattering and we've got this these these lovely um blooms appearing here and blossoming appearing here which again is a sort of one of those watercolor things that some people may not understand but um people that do watercolor a lot they 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 do include them particularly if you're painting a loose style they do include that in their in their painting they, they encourage that for the watercolor to do that but I do want some some hard edges with a bit of a curve here of the reflection of the bridge I mean this whole foreground is quite abstract and it's just shapes basically with this gondolier and the gondola just just jutting out of it but these abstract shapes of the oar the reflections just all mingling in with each other <clears throat> and then the two figures on the right hand side um, the other thing that we try to do is to in the painting is trying to join up all these different shapes so I've used these couple of figures here to join the middle ground with the foreground and um, because the shadow came across their legs we don't need to bother with any detail of the legs it makes it a lot easier for us to just have a, an indication of well this right hand figure here just a couple of legs but they're they're sort of d dropping down and connecting with that foreground shadow and then towards the end while the um the the, sh the shadows were still quite moist um, or damp i went in with thicker paint smaller brush and gave it a bit more definition with this darker paint so the edge of the key side the, an indication maybe of some steps here or something else happening um, a bit more definition to the gondola and the gondolier with the stripes and then finally um, in with some white paint very sparingly a little bit on the top of the head of the gondolier which will show up against that darker window um, the light hitting the right hand railings here a little bit on that lamp post tiny bit on these figures here and they just um, it just improved it hopefully just improved it just a little bit and they they come a little bit further forward to you so hopefully you like that um, please see more of my work up on my website um, timwilmot.com t-i-m-w-i-l-m-o-t.com uh, as I say if you want to 
have a go at this yourself um, then please uh, go up to my Patreon site and you can see full details of, uh, of a challenge or a project and uh, uh, for a small pledge I will give you a, a personal critique in, in return um, which I'm actually introducing a, an audio visual audio uh, critique now a, a video recording of my critique for you so um, a bit more a bit more personal for you but thanks for watching and catch up with you next time on the next video thank you